Written below are real-life situations. Determine if the events can occur at the same time or not. So first event, getting a grade of 90 in math and getting a grade of 90 in English. So, i-determine natin kung pwede ba itong mangyari at the same time or hindi sila pwedeng mag-occur at the same time. So, we can get 90 in math and we can also get 90 in English. Therefore, ang event number 1 or ang situation number 1 can occur at the same time. How about number 2? You are attending a class in school and you are sleeping in bed. Of course, these two events cannot occur at the same time. So, hindi pwede na naka-attend ka sa isang klase sa school and at the same time, nakatulog ka sa kama. Third situation, drawing a queen or a heart from a standard deck of cards. So, in this situation, pwede siyang mangyari at the same time kasi meron tayong queen and meron din tayong queen of hearts at the same time. How about the fourth situation, drawing a five or a six from a standard deck of cards? So, this cannot occur at the same time. Kasi pag nakuha mo na yung five, and it is not possible na makukuha mo rin yung six all at the same time. Okay? So, isang number lang or isang card lang, either five or six lang yung pwedeng mag at a particular time. Number five, sleeping while eating at the same time. Obviously, these situations cannot occur at the same time. And lastly, you work in Davao and you are an Ilocano. So, pwede siyang mangyari. Pwede kang magtabaw sa Davao and at the same time, isa kang Ilocano. opens our topic for today. Good day learners, we're going to discuss probability of mutual exclusive events and inclusive events. So before that, let's define first compound events. Compound events consist two or more simple events that are connected by the words and, or, or. So, sa past na lessons natin, we already discussed the probability of simple events. This time, we're going to deal with compound events. So, yung first na itatakil natin would be mutually exclusive events. So, based dun sa activity na binigay ko kanina, mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. These events have no common elements. So, ito yung mga example natin kanina na yung mga situations na hindi pwedeng mag-occur at the same time. We call them as mutually exclusive events. So, in getting the probability of mutually exclusive events, we have this formula. P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B or the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B in which A and B are mutually exclusive events. So, para mas lalo natin maintindihan, I have here a diagram. So, sa mutually exclusive events, yung dalawang events natin, A and B, do not have the same or common elements. So, kung mapapansin natin, wala silang intersection. Okay? So, magkahiwalay yung dalawang sets natin. So, we can use this formula. This would be a symbol of union or pwede natin siyang isulat as word na or. Okay? So, to understand it better, I have here an example. A card is drawn at random from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability of drawing a queen or a king? As we all know, drawing a queen and drawing a king is not the same. So, this is an example of mutually exclusive events. So to do that, we're going to assign A or set A as drawing a queen and B naman as drawing a king. So kukunin natin yung probability ni A, ia-add lang natin sa probability of B. 
Again, ito yung magiging formula natin. So, probability of A or probability of drawing a queen. So, we have 4 queens sa standard deck of cards. So, that would be equal to 4 over 52. Next would be probability of getting a queen or drawing a king. So, again, we have 4 kings sa standard deck of cards. Kaya, yung probability niya would be 4 over 52. So, mapapansin natin, this is one simple event and another simple event. Kaya, naging compound events na sila. Kasi, we have more than one simple event. So, since similar fraction sila, we copy the, the denominator. Add lang natin yung numerator. 4 plus 4, we have 8. 8 over 52. And, of course, we need to simplify them. Divide the numerator and denominator by 4. So, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 52 divided by 4 is equal to 13. And our final answer is 2 over 13. Next example, a painter has 3 red cans of paint and a blue can paint and 4 blue can paint to use for painting a wall. What is the probability of choosing a red or a blue can of paint in his job? So we let A choosing a red paint. B naman is yung choosing a blue paint. Same pa rin yung formula natin. So, probability of A choosing a red paint. So, we have 3 over ilan sila lahat ng paint. I-add lang natin yung number nila. We have 3 red cans at saka 4 blue cans. So, we have 3 plus 4 that is equal to 7. So, yung first probability natin choosing a red paint would be 3 over 7. Yung probability naman of choosing a blue can paint, we have 4 over 7. So, add lang natin sila, it will become 7 over 7 or simplified as equal to 1. Next example, a box contains 5 red balls, 3 green balls, and 2 blue balls. Helen draws one ball at random. What is the probability that the ball is either green or red? Okay, so we're going to... Assign A as choosing a green ball. Yung B naman is choosing a red ball. So, hindi na natin kailangan pang isulat yung blue ball. Kasi nga, uh, yung hinihingi lang sa problem is either green or red. Pero, ilalagay pa rin natin sa total number, number of sample space yung two blue balls. So, yung probability of choosing a green ball or P of A, that would be 3 over 10. Because we have 3 green balls out of the total 10 balls. So, bakit naging 10? We have added our balls. So, 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Okay. Next would be probability of getting a red ball. So, that would be 5 over 10. Add lang natin sila. So, we have 8 over 10. Then, we're going to simplify them. The lowest term would be 4 over 5. Now, ano naman yung kaibahan ng mutually exclusive events kay inclusive events? When we say inclusive events, these are events that can happen at the same time. These events have common elements. So, ito yung magiging symbol natin. So, itong part na to is mutually exclusive event. Pero may dinagdag lang tayo dito na operation which is minus probability of A and B. So, ito siya, itong sinabtrack natin, ito yung common elements ng dalawang given sets natin. So, suppose we have the Venn diagram, ito yung set A at ito yung set B. Unlike mutually exclusive events, mayroong common elements si inclusive events kasi pwede silang mangyari at the same time. That is why, ito yung magiging symbol natin. May dinagdag lang na minus P of A intersect B. So, we have an intersection. Ito yung symbol ng intersection natin. Or, we can have this one as this. Ito naman intersection, yung word niya would be end. Okay? Kailangan natin siyang isubtract nang sa ganun, hindi natin siya mapilang ng doble. Let's now have an example. A die is rolled. What is the probability of getting an even number or a number greater than 2? So, yung pinakaunang event is to get an even number. So, as we all know, sa isang die, we have 6 faces. Yung even numbers lang niya would be 2, 4, and 6. So, we have 3. 
Okay, next would be getting a number greater than 2. So, yung mga numbers greater than 2 would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, we have 4. As you can observe, may mga common elements si set A and set B. Those are 4 and 6. So, ito na yung magiging intersection nila. The intersection of set A and B is equal to 4 and 6. So, we have 2 elements. Again, sa A, we have 3. Sa B, we have 4. And sa intersection naman nila, we have 2. So, itong intersection, ito yung isasubtract natin sa sum ni A and B. So, using the formula, probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So, yung probability of A, which is getting an even number, is 3 over 6. Yung probability naman of B or probability of getting a number greater than 2 would be 4 over 6. And the probability of A and B naman, we have 2 over 6. 2 kasi common yung, or dalawang elements yung common sa kanila. We have 4 and 6. So, we have minus 2, 6. Simplify lang natin. 3, 6 plus 4, 6. We have 7, 6. Minus 2, 6. That would be equal to 5, 6. So, hindi natin siya masimplify pa. Ito na yung common or lowest term niya. So, the final answer would be 5 over 6. Next example. A card is drawn at random from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability of drawing a jack or a red card? Okay. As we all know, we have 4 jack sa isang standard of deck of cards. So, we have A that would be equal to 4 elements. Then, drawing a red card naman, we have 26. Yung hearts na cards ay red at yung diamonds naman na cards are also red. So, that would be in total of 20. 6. But as we all know, common sa set A and set B yung dalawang cards na Jack of Hearts and Jack Diamonds. So, ito yung magiging intersection nila. Ito yung ibabawas natin. So, yung intersection ng set A and B is equal to 2. Ito yung magiging solution natin. So, the probability of A or getting or drawing a Jack, we have 4 over 52. Plus, the probability of drawing a red card that is 26 over 52 minus yung intersection nila na 2 over 52. So, denominator natin is 52 because the standard deck of cards is 52. Ito yung sample space natin. So, 4 plus 26, we have 30. Then, isasubtract lang natin sa 2. So, the final answer would be 28 over 52. Kukunin lang natin yung lowest term. So, i-divide natin yung numerator and denominator by 4. So, the final answer is 7 over 13. Now, it's your turn. Try to answer the following questions. And that's a wrap. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Sir Nino. And you can also post your math problems in the comment section. And we will do our very best to provide solution to your questions. Because remember, every problem has a solution. At kung math ang problema ninyo, ako ang kagapay ninyo, ako ang Sir Nino.